Coming up, the new one from David Cam and Orion Knives. I get a Malaysian Golak, Malaysian perhaps, from my brother Vic, who's so awesome. And then my favorite folders, Autumn 2024. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. One of my favorite comments this past week, this is actually two comments combined uh, because the commenter went back and added some more. Uh, and this, we were talking about super steals here. He says, I've noticed the opposite with super steals. Maybe cutting one material exclusively is where people see a boost in edge retention. But in construction, I cut a variety of different materials and notice no benefit to super steels. And actually, they're a hindrance because I can't touch up the edge quickly like I can with something like a well-done D2. Even just looking at my knives, my K390 knife is unrecognizable because I've sharpened it so much, whereas a SOG in cryo-treated D2 is like new because a simple strop brings, brings it right back to shaving sharp. I'm kind of thinking the whole super steel thing is a scam, really, says just me, 8060. And uh, that's one of my favorite comments because I don't have the the day to day use case that just me uh, eighty sixty has, but I've always kind of thought hmm, maybe there maybe there are diminishing returns to having super high edge retention in in knives for some reason. But he brings up a really interesting point. Maybe it's in. Maybe it's with people who cut the same material over and over and over and over that they notice the edge retention in something like um, M390. Uh, but otherwise, you have to sharpen it. And like he says, you can't just uh, have a strop in your bag and strop it back to back to normal real quick like you can with D2. So kind of an interesting conundrum, super steel versus non super steel and you know, we know that uh, super steels do have some superior uh, qualities, but uh, maybe maybe going back to basics is could be the way to go with a basic chore like cutting. And that's what knives are for cutting. Uh, my second comment was from Perry with Cigar 217. And this was purely self-interest. But he says, bro is the coolest dad ever. And he's talking about me. And it's in that uh, it's in that video where I'm talking about the swedge. Uh, how you can use even a dull swedge to affect a pretty nasty back cut. And I don't know how uh, my being a father came up from that comment, but I decided I would just take it and not question. So bro is the coolest dad ever, is one of the coolest comments ever. Thank you, Perry with Cigar 217. All right, that said, let's now get to a pocket check. What's in his pocket? Let's find out. Here's the knife junkie with his pocket check of knives. In my front right pocket today, I had the absolutely beautiful Warncliffe. This is a prototype from Dirk Pinkerton. This will be coming out under his own shingle. This is the standoff. Uh, just an absolutely incredible knife. He sent me this as a you know, prototype to check out and give him feedback on. I gave him the feedback and I kept dragging my feet on sending this back. And uh, I'm not saying this was a tactic, but he came back and said, well, just hold on to it. Uh, and uh, so I am. And I love it. It's a true worn cliff, meaning it's got a perfectly straight edge, a point down by the knuckles and then a continuously descending spine. So it's a continual curve. It looks kind of like a worn cliff, like a traditional worn cliff on a traditional slip joint knife. Uh, this thing is awesome this morning is the only time I really use this. I cut a bunch of zip ties as I was leaving for work this morning. I noticed <laughs> uh, that we still have all of our Halloween stuff up and I, I hate uh, decorations up after the occasion. So I went around and cut all the zip ties. My wife is a great decorator and she makes uh, sure that everything is battened down. So I did that with this and it zipped through with that S 90 V blade. Uh, it zipped right through full flat ground. I'm sorry, saber ground with a um, with a fuller and a flipper. And that fuller, I know that when he goes to make the final 
uh, when he turns this into a production knife and not just a prototype. That's one of the very few things about this that will change. That fuller will have sh uh, sharper edges to engage the finger easier uh, for opening. Really cool. I love how the, the lock bar cut is curvy to, to follow the chamfering of the contours of the handle. Just a great knife. I've been carrying this one a lot and uh, I carried it today. I loved it. Whoop. There we go. Yeah. And it really, uh, it cuts. It's awesome. And I love that straight edge and for cutting big, thick zip ties. Cause she went into, yeah, we, we had some big, thick, like overkill zip ties on some things and you just kind of slide it in and you just turn it. You don't have to cut or like saw or pull or anything Just stick it in there and just turn it on its axis under the zip tie and it pops immediately. So that thing was doing great work. Uh, this is another great working knife, even though it's so fancy and let's face it, expensive. Uh, this Jack Wolf Knives um, Bionic Jack is really a killer knife. Uh, it's based on the Cyborg Jack contours uh, in terms of handle. And that is an original um, Ben Belkin design. That's an original Ben Belkin pattern. So uh, Ben Belkin, who designs and who owns Jack Wolf Knives, designs all the knives and has a very, very deep knowledge of traditional slip joints. He has a very, very um, uh, incredible collection of both production and uh, custom slip joint knives. And out of all that knowledge and passion, he designed this really cool, um, well, ma uh, a pattern uh, with the angular ha uh, angular sort of um, trapper handle that fits the hand so well. Even though it's got uh, relatively sharp angles and straight edges, it feels awesome in hand. And then that really interesting long swedge upswept California or Turkish. I don't know what you're going to call that clip point. Uh, you don't spell it, son. You eat it. Uh, so it full, a uh, full hollow grind there and, uh, a hand rub satin, just a great knife. I've been carrying this one in my back right pocket, uh, as all great secondary locking blades, uh, deserve that position. Uh, S90 V did I mention that? No, I don't think I did. Yep. S90 V blade steel. So that's two of them right there. S90 V. Uh, thirdly on me today, I had uh, the Agent 001 from TKL Knives, and I'm spoiled. I have uh, two double edge versions and one single edge version. I never carry the single edge version, but the double edge I change according to how I want to carry. And today I wanted in the waistband over here um, at the three o'clock. So I chose this one with the Woodland Burl G10 handle. The one with the purple burl G10 handle is set up for a horizontal carry on the front of the belt. And today I was too exposed for such carry. So I went with this. Um, you know, I don't know. I don't have much to say about it. I I love this knife. I think it's one of the coolest knives I've, I've ever seen. But I am, you know, I co-designed it and uh, this was my idea. So this knife is very close to my heart. I carry it all the time. I love it. And I love TKL knives and how Tim uh, interpreted this and how he tweaked the handle to make it perfect and, and how he worked to make that, uh, to make that um, distal ridge between the upper edge and the bottom edge, follow my drawing. So I, I, I highly, highly recommend that knife or all TKL knives. They're just super awesome. He's a, he's a great dude. And he really, really makes some freaking awesome knives. All right. And lastly on me today was my emotional support knife. This one I haven't carried for a while, but I had it on a road trip with me recently to Ohio. So it's been kind of banging around my pocket. Uh, this one was just around today. It didn't really have a, a special place. It was in my floating around my uh, front left, front right. And then it ended up on my desk, got a lot of play. Uh, this this knife, I keep that um, blue, uh, what do you call it, Snaggletooth MF on there. That's like a wave pocket opener, an aftermarket wave pocket opener from Snaggletooth. And I keep that on there because in the wintertime, this goes on the inside, in the inside pocket 
of my winter jacket. And if I ever have to pull it out, like, sure, you can have my wallet. And I reach into my inside pocket to give them the wallet. I do have the option to grab that, automatically open it with the um, with the uh, snaggle tooth tactical and then stab the guy in the throat. But chances are I wouldn't do that because I'm just not that guy. But I have that knife in that position all winter long for that reason, honestly. And I do keep uh, the snaggle tooth on there so it can just open up without having to fuss with it. So that's what I had on me. What did you have on you? Let me know. Drop it in the comments below. I had the standoff prototype from Dirk Pinkerton. And when that comes out uh, for, for pre-order, I will be talking all about it. Like I have been up until now. I had the uh, cyborg, or I'm sorry, the um, bionic jack from Jack Wolf Knives. I had the TKL Knives Agent 001 double-edged last-ditch fighting knife. And then, of course, I had the awesome, I, I would say the awesomest bench made, in my opinion, right here, the uh, bug out with my uh, Alan Putnam scales. All right, coming up, let us get to Knife Life News. But first, a message. Check this out. Adventure Delivered. Your monthly subscription for hand-picked outdoor, survival, EDC, and other cool gear from our expert team of outdoor professionals. TheKnifeJunkie.com slash BattleBox. You're listening to The Knife Junkie Podcast. And now here's The Knife Junkie with The Knife Life News. First up in Life Knife News, Knife Life News, is the a new one from We Knife card the, called the Archeo, Archeo, oh my gosh, we could start this from the very top. Uh, joining me for Knife Life News, we're going to talk about We Knife the Archaeozoic. Archaeozoic. And this sucker is beautiful. And something I really like about it is it's hearkening back to the very uh, beginnings of We Knife when all of their knives had the four inch blades, that first uh, 600 series. They were all bigger knives. And then over time, they kind of got the drift and, and, and brought their size down a little bit. Uh, probably to resonate with the American market. But um, this one, which is from an in-house, their in-house design team, is a full four-inch uh, blade here. So this beautiful thing is a four-inch drop point. It's M390 blade steel with a really cool and kind of signature uh, thumb swale on the spine. Obviously, your thumb is supposed to go in that little notch. Uh, for indexing and for you know any sort of power cut, you're going to be using your thumb on the spine i gotta say personally i like the way it looks i don't like to be hemmed in like that uh but i i appreciate the uh the design flourish this is flipper only it's got a nice low profile flipper and um it is tie uh titanium frame with nest a nested bolster lock and i had never heard of that term until i read this knife news article um a nested bolster lock is kind of like a bolster lock slash liner lock so you got the bolster full bolster on both sides but on the inside they've taken part of the metal and split it off as the uh as the lock so you don't really see it from the outside so i i'm not exactly sure to be 100 honest with you how that differs from a liner lock with titanium bolsters but i think it's because the bolster and the and the liner which is the lock are of the same piece of metal and that's just pure speculation so maybe we'll find out from uh, more from we as we go on but from what was written in this article that's what i've gleaned uh, by the way, I love the shape of that handle. It reminds me of the SOCOM series from uh, Microtech, or it reminds me of the Scorpion from Off Grid Knives. Just like contoured but neutral at the same time. It offers various swales for the fingers to nest in, um, and it's got that sort of semi coffin, coffin shaped pommel. Uh, so ergonomic but pretty neutral. Um, Pretty uh, nice looking knife here. I find that we knives, this is personal taste myself, we knives are a little too fancy for my taste. Uh, but when things uh, drip down to Civivi or a Sen cut, they're kind of right in my wheelhouse. And I think it goes the opposite direction sometimes. 
test stuff out with the uh, less expensive knives and then elevate them to more expensive uh, Wii models in the future. All right, next up is from CRKT. I'm not sure how to pronounce this knife. Uh, there are a couple of knives in this article, but there's only one I want to talk about. It's the uh, Zolotl Fixed. Zolotl? X-O-L-O-T-L. Xolotl? I don't know. Uh, but it it was a knife that came out as a folder uh, a long, eh, I'd say two two years ago, in the uh, Forged for War series from CRKT. And if you don't know what that is, Forged for War series is a series of knives designed by combat vets, combat veterans uh, who who have designed knives and they go through the process. So uh, this is a fixed blade version. And looking at it at first, I thought it was a folding version, but this is a fixed bladed version of the Zol Zolotl, which was a pretty big uh, daggerish um, flipper that they came out with a couple of years ago. This is the fixed blade version. 4.53 inches of SK5. SK5 is a steel, a high carbon steel, I believe, that we don't hear much about, though uh, cold steel has used it a lot in their days. I have an SK5 Trailmaster, I believe. Um, but SK5, great, uh, great steel for fixed blades. I think it's a very tough steel. Uh, but this one, of course, is a is a dagger, and they and they fulfilled the promise of a dagger shaped blade in this one, and gave it two edges. Not impressive for a fixed blade knife, but like I said, when I first saw this, I was like, "Oh, the handle is much wider than the blade, and it looks like a folder, it, right? It does. Uh, the way the scales come up past the integral uh, quillions and everything, this looks like a folding knife." Uh, that's why I thought initially another folding double-edged dagger, but no, no, that's not what this is, but it's pretty cool nonetheless, uh, because I do like that profile. And I love that it comes with three VEF serrations, those big, long scooped serrations angled back towards uh, the user that are just, it's like having three little recurves. Uh, right there on your blade. Uh, this is full tang G10 slabs, Kydex sheath, the full Godilla. We're not sure when this is going to be coming out, though. Uh, I think they put it out as coming soon, in quotes. Next up from Civivi, or as we Italians say, Civivi. Uh, we don't really. Uh, the Pyrus. This is a cool one. This is from Ostop Hell, who is a very prolific polish designer we see a lot of his stuff on uh in real steel um but this one from civivi is really cool it's a karambit inspired mini slip joint so a very small hawk build slip joint with a ring and yes uh, if you were wondering your finger fits just barely into that ring so that tells you how small this whole affair is uh you can see that it's got a uh a spring clip circumnavigating that uh, finger hole it's got a check this out 0.65 inch so just a hair over half an inch that blade is of 14 c 28 in uh hawk bill and it's got a double detent with a little flipper which uh if jim scrolls down we can see the little flipper thing uh reversible wire clip and then this one is quote unquote coming soon oh okay Thank you, uh, Jim, because that also reminds me, this comes in both a G10, which we saw up on top, and a carbon fiber model, which we see here in the one that um, reveals the flipper tab. Uh, though they have different handle materials, they maintain uh, the same 14C28 and blade steel uh, across the two models. This, again, is coming soon, uh, but they showed this off at Blade Show West, so I think that's... Uh, a uh, pretty pretty good promise that it is coming soon. Lastly, this one really got my attention um, when I saw someone's video on it, but it got my attention for two reasons. First of all, it's definitely a dedicated outdoor camp knife. I've been more interested in those kind of knives recently just because I've been trying to teach myself to get better with fire making and uh, all those kind of uh, outdoor activities. And this one looks like it would be uh, great for that. This is called the wood nymph hmm, saucy name uh anything with nymph 
I guess I'm down. Uh, this is a collaboration uh, with Bushcraft Kelso, a famous online bushcrafter who I don't know uh, from a, a hill of beans. However, uh, maybe I'd like to get to know him because I like this knife and uh, I'm get, getting more interested in bushcraft type stuff. What's bushcraft, Bob? Bushcraft is survival plus. That's how I see it. It's not just surviving, but it's surviving with a little bit of panache. I'm going to take this squirrel and I'm going to create a water wheel rotisserie. And, uh, and I'm going to rotisserie this squirrel right next to the river. You know, that's like bushcraft on 11. Uh, but basically, it's um, being able to survive and craft things for yourself in your survival situation, uh, whether that's traps or utensils or bowls or survival, whatever. Uh, this little thing looks like, um, to me, this is, uh, well, it's Puko inspired for sure, uh, but it's also scalpel inspired. This looks like the street, the street scalpel from Tops but with a bit more practicality added. It's sort of a woods scalpel, if you will. Um, but I think it's pretty cool. The wood nymph, uh, 2.5 inch drop point, 1095, as we come to expect. Uh, though a lot of the smaller EDC knives that Tops makes are in 154 cm. If they, pick, if they think it's going to be right up next to your body, they make it in stainless. Uh, a very thin 0 0.09 inch stock. Uh, for um, tops that's quite thin their knives average at about a quarter inch uh, and a thin neutral handles so if the if the blade reminds you of a puko the handle probably reminds you of a a, a quaken or something like that uh, but overall together they look beautiful so that uh, uh, like i said the blade stock is thin and the handle is narrow so uh, they beefed up the micarta with a multi-colored scale level scales, and they are contoured when you look at them dorsal down, and uh, so that that'll help it stay in your hands. I I talk about this all the time with small knives, like it's got to be small, it's got to be large on one dimension, like really small folders. If they're fat, they fit in the hand even if it's only. Uh, a three finger grip. So this uh, knife seems to do that. Leather sheath, nice small little leather pouch sheath, 3.2 inches available now. So go check that out. All right, still to come, we're going to check out two new knives that came across my desk that I received this past week. And then after that, of course, we're going to take a look at my favorite folders for autumn 2024. The Shockwave Tactical Torch is your ultimate self-defense companion, featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super-sharp, crenulated bezel, and a built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch, the knifejunkie.com slash shockwave. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. I wanted to show you this. This is super cool. This is the new knife from David Cam and his Orion knives. And thank you, David, for sending this to me. And oh, man, I felt bad because uh, I, I think he thinks I was dropping him a hint because uh, on Thursday Night Knives, he was there and he was commenting. And I said, oh, David, your new knife. I've seen it on a couple of people's channel. I love it. I love the the uh, the sloped spine to the to the midpoint worn clip or um midpoint tanto thing i love the uh the lock is right there on the pivot and you know i i was just got, and he sent me one so thank you so much david i wasn't fishing uh but i'm not sending it back so don't ask uh this thing is awesome i'm a big fan of tantos i kind of always have been but uh recently i think i've honed in or home homed in on what I really like about uh, or which kind of Tantos I really like. In terms of looks, I like the Tantos with the high point, almost a, an upswept. But in terms of usage and actual reality, this is what I like. Uh, if you look at, at this Ares, of course, God of War, uh, if you ask the Greeks, if you ask the, the Romans, it's Mars. Uh, but same dude, it's, it's Ares here. And uh, if you look at this, uh, the point is right on the center line from the clip 
to the uh, pivot to the point. It's right in the center line. So it's it's kind of got the the point orientation of a dagger. So that means like no matter <laughs> you could you could be you could be in the dark and accidentally have your edge up and not know it, but thrust and still have that tip where you want it to be. Now, uh, if if this is the case, you're probably drunk or something, and you should probably put your knife away anyway. Uh, but if you don't know that your knife is upside down, that's something that I love about a center line point is that it's kind of always going to be in the same place, no matter how you have the knife. Uh, and since he's calling this the Aries, I have to believe that some of that comes into effect. This is a tactical knife. You don't call a knife Aries without it being tactical. Uh, you also don't put this kind of beautiful hollow ground, very thinly hollow ground 14C28 and edge uh, next to a um, very thin but very flat and stout front portion without it being a little bit about self-defense, a little bit about tactical stuff. And also, like I said, you don't call it Aries. And then here it's got a sculpted clip uh, material. I'm not I'm not sure. I'm betting it's titanium. It's what people usually sculpt clips, clips out of. And it has a very nice uh, G10 handle with cool, great texturing. It's got this very interesting lock here. This is my first uh, pivot lock knife. And I have to say, David Cam is a pretty freaking smart dude. He was making button lock flippers. I don't want to say before anyone because he wasn't, but his button lock flipper was up to par before almost anyone else's button lock flipper was up to par. David Cam, he doesn't get enough um, credit for that. I don't think David Cam and Orion knives, um, with his second release, a, uh, and now the name is escaping me. Uh, I'll think of it in a second, uh, but a little clip point with the jimping right up on the clip. It was a nice wide, so small knife with a wide handle made it easy to hold on to. Um, and, uh, and the button lock and the flipper, like I said, he got it down pretty much before anyone, even before Civivi was like knocking these things out by the uh, tens of thousands, he, he had already uh, nailed it. Anyway, David Cam, Orion Knives, you got to go check him out uh, and check out Orion Knives and this thing. This is awesome. And I believe like most of his knives, this is sub $100, I believe. And if it isn't, well, sue me. Uh, or or ask for your your admission ticket back, but I'm pretty sure this is about 85 bucks, and the ergonomics are stellar. It's very neutral, but very comfortable. And and you know, I was talking before. If your knife is upside down, if you have feeling in your in your hands, uh, and and I say that because I don't have feeling in my thumb, but if you have feeling in your hands, you'll be able to tell. Oh, okay, this is upside down. So worry not. This thing is really awesome. Don't know how I went down the upside down rabbit hole, but my favorite way to open it also is that reverse flick. All right, second up, this is one. I was just uh, home for a funeral and uh, or, or for a celebration of life, if you will. Uh, my best friend's dad passed away and um, it was a, a very nice occasion. And it was cool to honor my friend's dad, who was a, I won't go into it, but a super stud. Like, they don't make guys like this anymore. Uh, very cool guy. And I knew him growing up. Um, but anyway, while I was home, uh, after my brother and I got back from said celebration of life, he gave me this. And it is a, I think, Malaysian, Indonesian something Malaysian. I'm not sure where this is from, but it's a Golok. And it is so beautiful. I got to do some research on it. Uh, I just pretty much got home from that trip. Uh, that, I think, is a bone handle. It's definitely not wood. You can see how it's cracked here. And the shape of it is just beautiful. And it's semi, it's like translucent. You can see light through it. Um, and it fits in the hand perfectly like this. Now, I don't know if it was intended to be held like this with a little bit of, of the forefinger up on the blade, or if it was kind of more like this with some of the pinky down on this rounded part, or if this was just carried and used by someone with smaller hands than myself. But I have pretty medium-sized hands. It's not like I have big Goliath 
uh, meat mitts here. So uh, not sure, not sure exactly. But they do, uh, Malaysian uh, knife and sword handles are usually pretty darn small. Uh, very ergonomic and whatever. This thing is just super cool. Thank you, Vic. It's super sharp. It's really sharp, and you can tell it it, it has not been touched up by modern hands. I, I Some of the swords on the wall behind me have been owned by people after the original owner, but before me, and they've tried to sharpen them, and they've jacked up the edges. And you can see that from a mile away. This does not have that, and yet it's still super sharp. No point. So it's funny because I've had this. I'm going to go to the main camera for this. I've had this and I've been doing a lot of like, it feels good to just do Carenza with it, you know, like the uh, shadow boxing with the blade. But a big part of that for me is thrusting. And so with this, I've had to like remember to just slash because it's a Golok. It doesn't have a tip. Most Goloks don't have tips. Uh, they're squared off. In this case, it's rounded off. Um, so a uh, tool and a weapon and uh, really happy about this. And the sheath, by the way, is in better shape than most of the um, Filipino slash Indonesian slash South Pacific swords and knives that I have. This, uh, this sheath really stood the test of time. And I think it looks beautiful uh, when the knife itself is sheathed. Really awesome. Thank you, Vito. I love my brother. He's the best. Not only does he give me cool stuff, but you know, when I saw him this weekend, I was like, man, Vic, I don't know what's up with me. And we had a great talk. And my brother's like, he's only four years older than me. He's seen a lot and he's accomplished a lot. And it was great to see him. So if you have a brother, you have a sister, have any family, get in touch. Say hi. You'll be glad you did. All right. That said, on that sentimental note, let me just say, uh, we do have a Patreon here. And it's a, uh, a Patreon account of, of, of great acclaim and renown. Everyone knows about it. It's the best. It's the greatest. Everyone agrees. So become a Patreon, a patron right here. You can scan the QR code and check out the different kind of things you can get at the different tiers. Uh, of course, the Gentleman Junkie gets entered into a monthly uh, knife drawing. So check that out as well. Quickest way to do that is to scan the QR code on your screen or just go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. I will repeat that complicated address again. It's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. And now let us get to <laughs> to my favorite folders of autumn 2024. All right. <clears throat> favorite folders of autumn 2024 are these. And I, I stipulated this in the title. It is autumn 2024. And these are the favorites now uh, because these are the ones I've been carrying recently. Now, if I had to go through my entire collection and call them down to say 12 or something like that, or even four, one for each season, since we're talking about autumn 2024, uh, I would maybe have different things here. But these are some of the newer ones that I, I've had a hard time not adding into my carry and putting down. And I'll start with the most audacious uh, because I got this <clears throat> end of summer and I got it in person which meant a lot to me. I got this one uh, at Willie Blades in Delaware. They've been on the show uh, just recently. And uh, I I had been watching, um, well, I'm always watching, uh, what's his name? Tomas, what's his name? I know his name. Tomas Alas of Tactical Tavern. I love that dude. He's so charismatic. And his videos are so fun. And he's got the same taste in knives. He loves cool knives. And I saw him in one video going to town on a ballistics dummy with the traditional six-inch tie light from 25 years ago. And I've never had one. And I, after that video, I was like, Tomas, great salesman, sir. I'm going to go buy one of these. And I did. And it was at the Willie Knife Shop. That was nice to, uh, nice to buy it in person from two really stand-up people. And I love this knife. I don't know what took me so long. It's kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like I was so punk rock. I, I wouldn't allow myself to get into Nirvana until Kurt Cobain died. And then I'm like, okay, I'll, now I'll listen to 
<laughs> you know, it was one of those things. It's like, uh, I've been around cold steels for so long. I don't need to get a tie light six, but man, I did. This one is an old school OS eight with the grivery and you have a super, um, almost two, if you ask me, almost two contoured handle. Like I wouldn't mind it if these scales were flat, honestly, uh, because in aggregate, it, it, it almost equals a round handle. Of course, there are flat spots that'll stop you. There are lightning holes and speed holes, et cetera, that, that will stop it from turning. But uh, on the whole, I, I, I kind of wouldn't mind flatter because it would also make it thinner and easier to carry. But as it stands, this is a pretty damn easy giant knife to carry. Um, at six inches, it's the easiest six inch cold steel I have to carry. Five and a half inches goes to the Frenzy. That thing is super flat. That's what I'm talking about. If this were had a similar handle to the Frenzy, I'd be even more excited. But this one has is one of the few cold steel liner locks. And I got to say, I'm not I'm surprised no one else has ever picked up on this because they've been making this model forever. And instead of just having a flat piece of steel come up to a come up to the tang of the blade, they take a flat piece of steel up to the tang of the blade and fold it over. So you have double the surface area of lock uh, against that blade. You have the vertical and the horizontal. You have it and, and they come together at a 90 degree angle here. And I, I don't know, I could be wrong, but I think that that is superior strength in a liner lock. Uh, it, you might not get the same release and, and, uh, you know, um, I don't know, uh, exciting, excitable, uh, you know, drop shuddiness of some of the other knives, but the, the fact that it comes to the tang at a right angle, I would feel fine about jamming that into a ballistics dummy and not worrying about it fold on me. Can't say that about all liner locks, though. All right, next one on the list. This one uh, I got in June, and I carried the SHIT out of this, man, and I still am. Sorry, I just spelled it. That was immature of me. Uh, this here is the Eck Integral Folder by Les George and Alan Alishowitz. Uh, these dudes... Uh, are you know two superlative uh, knife designers slash makers and um, both former Marines and um, let's see uh, Les George was an EOD guy so he he disposed of bombs and such to, uh, defused bombs and Alan Alishowitz was in uh, Force Recon which is Special Forces so two total badasses uh, who are now just making incredible knives came together they both have a love of daggers. They came together to make this very uh, um, iconic, well, a folding version of a very iconic knife. And I don't use the term iconic like the press. I don't throw it around uh, just because it sold 100,000 records. You're not an icon, but the Eck uh, Commando knife is. And so you can see some of the, some of the very uh, similarities here in the handle and in the blade shape. Uh, the design cues are many and complete, and I absolutely love this thing. This is also my first integral folder. It has that integral back strap there. On bearings, super great. Sorry, I forgot the uh, the first parentheses. It makes me look like a a joker, uh, but uh, there there should be one there in that lower third. Uh, I love the um, what do you call it? The fuller down the center. And it widens out in the center, of course, making it more rigid. Super thin swedge up top makes this an extreme puncturer. Great action. And I love this integral uh, build. So I might have to get more in the future, though right now I'm not so much in a folder acquisition phase. I'm very happy with the folders I have right now. Uh, isn't that weird to say? Not so on the fixed blade. I, I, there are always more fixed blades to get, but right now I'm feeling all right. Okay, so uh, next up is Civivi. This is the Sentinel Strike 2. I've been carrying this thing all that I love this knife. Uh, so the Sentinel Strike 1, or the Sentinel Strike, we'll just call it, had the Warncliffe blade, the modified Warncliffe blade with the large opening hole. This one has a beautiful compound ground spanto style blade of course spanto or spanto is uh 
Rick Hinderer's uh, um, proprietary naming of this type of blade. But what it is, is a drop point with a compound grind. So from here to here, you have a very thin hollow grind. And then it's kind of subtle, but right here, you'll see that curve. That's where this deep hollow grind meets that thin flat grind to make the tip. And then, of course, you have that giant swedge on top. This is a very, I, I, I would venture to say that I like this better than the Sentinel Strike 1. And that overall, it's a better knife. The Sentinel Strike 1 is super awesome. Don't get me wrong. And I love it. Uh, but this, this one takes the cake. Aluminum construction with an integral, integral fiberglass reinforced nylon backstrap. So this is one piece. This green piece is one. It's part of the handle here. It's the full backspacer there part of the handle there and uh it's a cool little touch and i'm wondering what kind of rigidity it adds to this because this knife feels super solid super stout a great clip here a uh, reversible clip attaches on the top with a very subtle tungsten ball there for breaking glass you don't even feel it in reverse grip that's the civivi sentinel strike two next up i'll just mention this briefly because i waxed poetic earlier uh but this one is definitely on the list i think i got some schmutz on there that that'll that'll clean off um but this uh standoff is a prototype but it won't be forever uh dirk pinkerton has sort of um what do we want to say? He's starting to settle in on all of the changes that he has to make of it. All of the changes. That's one. I know that he's making one change. I had two, but I think the second one is a prototype issue and not a, a production issue. Uh, but yeah, this is great. My change, of course, was uh, make this the uh, the fuller more sharp so the fat of the thumb can grab on it to uh, launch that blade open. And uh, before I even mentioned it, Dirk said, oh, besides the fuller sharpness, what else, do, <laughs> what else does this knife need? And then I had one other suggestion, and uh, that is it. And, and it was a very minor one. So Dirk Pinkerton standoff. I've been carrying it a lot. You can't have it quite yet, but it'll be on pre-order soon. And I don't know who's OEMing this, but it's awesome. If I had to guess, if I had to guess, I'd say Riot or Best Tech. But I don't have to guess, and I, I, I shouldn't speculate. All right, next up, this one was sent to me by the company, like, without any prompting. And I, I was kind of like, Do you, are you sure you sent this to the right knife junkie? But it's so sweet. This is the Ishtar from Herman Knives. Uh, absolute butter of a Polish custom knife. It's so nice. Okay, so you've got that uh, really cool M390 upswept Persian blade. Uh, this Ishtar, or uh, yeah, the Ishtar comes with, well, no, I, I should, okay, the Ishtar is with this blade. There's another knife uh, from Herman that has this handle with a more worn cliffy blade, and then they have other models too, but the Ishtar, oh, Okay, so uh, anodized titanium in that high voltage green. I know that that is a difficult uh, color to achieve. You can see M390 on the blade, and this is number 506. So this has a, a, a um, serial number, 506. Proprietary clip, but I love this gravel road texture. That's my term for it, by the way. So if Herman wants to use it, they have to pay me. A gravel road texture feels great in hand looks cool as hell uh, and then you have this uh, little trench dug out under the clip so some of your uh, fatter or, or thicker gauged um, material pants and jeans and such can fit under there still without having the clip uh, come out too far put it up there you can see uh, proudly made in poland and you've got weight relief on both sides. This thing is outstanding. Uh, I mentioned Ostop Hell before. He's from Poland. A uh, number of great Polish knife makers and designers. Uh, 
And I personally used to love Polish movies. Krzysztof Kieslowski. I loved him and all of his like 90s movies. And uh, for a while, I was in love with Juliette Binoche speaking Polish because it sounds like French. I know she's French. Sounds like French a little bit. But also sounds like Russian. Very, very cool. Okay, next up is the Tim Kennedy folder, the TFK1 from Cold St uh, from Emerson Knives. This was a knife that I traded for. I traded my holdout, my large six-inch serrated holdout for this knife. And uh, this was my buddy, Ian, who has uh, who I used to train martial arts with and who more currently is teaching me stuff because he went way beyond me and uh, got all sorts of certifications and is a 100% badass. Um, I love that dude. And he made this trade with me and I was like, this is a bad trade as a knife guy. Let me tell you this, this holdout is OS eight and you could get a new one and we could still do the trade and I'd still owe you money. And he's like, I don't care. I just want the, I want the Emerson out of my life and I want the cold steel in my life. And I was like, man, I don't like to argue with friends. So give it over here. Uh, this thing is awesome. I love it. Four inch blade G10 handle as usual. The full recipe 154 CM. I say recipe. That's the Emerson uh, production recipe. They do different things, of course, for more special or type, more special knives, but this is uh, from the first run of the production TFK1s, Tim Kennedy folders. If you don't know who Tim Kennedy is, he's a, uh, a, a Green Beret, like a current Green Beret, as far as I know, who still who goes on all these podcasts and, you know, was helping in North Carolina and is a uh, uh, did UFC fighting is just a general, you know, badass luminary type. Um, and I don't mean in the in the biblical sense. I mean, luminary, like he was, he is a very smart guy. He's like one of those people you go to when you need the expert opinion of a green beret or a UFC fighter or a pretty smart political thinker. Anyway, uh, none of that matters because this is the knife, uh, that bears his name. Uh, he said to Ernest Emerson, I want to do a knife with you. Ernest Emerson says, it'll be you know, combat ready, or it's not going to be all fancy. So if you want a fancy knife, go somewhere else. He said, no, I want this. So, and uh, Tim Kennedy also said, I want a slim Bowie knife style, slim clip point. And so that's what he got. Look at that thing. Reminds me of like a, well, a fighting Bowie, like the Natchez or the Hell's Bells. Just a long, um, slender, stabby Bowie. And really, Bowies are, yeah, they're, they're great for slashing, chopping, and back, back cutting. But really, they are intended to be thrusting weapons. Um, because you don't, you're not there to dance. Uh, if you're in the knife fight on the sandbar, you're not there to dance or to show off your moves. You're there to survive and to kill your enemy. And the quickest way to do that is with a thrust. Slashing is death by a thousand cuts. You want to thrust. That's what the Roman army learned uh, when they adopted fired all their pikemen who went around stabbed the guys who were still dying on the battlefield and they created the gladius so the roman uh, soldiers could just stab instead of slash and uh, not have to pay all these dudes to kill all the guys that that were left over on the battlefield it's all it's all a matter of economics all right next is probably well it's 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 my favorite locking flipping jack wolf and it's the benny so this big dude is the um, folding locking equivalent of the Benny's clip, uh, a knife designed by Ben Belkin to, uh, as a tribute to uh, Tony Bowes and his Lanny's clip, which had this sort of stout, wide um, trapper handle with bolsters and then a uh, long swedge clip point blade. This one, of course, uh, like all folding, uh, all flipping, locking jack wolves, has a bolster lock. Love this thing. Um, and then it's got the uh, machine ground swedge, or I'm sorry, machine ground uh, nail neck, so you can just flick it open. You're like, aren't they all? Isn't the whole thing machine ground? It's a term. It's an expression. And now that I'm saying it, I'm not sure if I'm using it correctly. But nail necks, 
you know, have that half moon shape. And then when it's just straight, they usually call that a, a um, machine cut nail neck or whatever. So I, I, I'm not sure what you call that, but I do know it's an opening hole and I do know it, it sort of emulates the nail neck concept. Uh, S 90 V super thin hollow grind and so sharp and beautiful. You got that machine grinder satin and then you have lava flow carbon fiber with a clip. If you don't like the clip, you want to throw this in a slip. Uh, yeah, he's going to send you a filler tab with the whole knife. Uh, he's not going to send you a slip though. All of the slip joints come with the leather slip. These knives are too big. So if you want a leather slip, you're going to have to do that yourself, though I, I'm pretty sure you can do it on jackwolfknives.com. Been loving this thing. All right, next up, this one right here. You've been seeing a bit of, a bit of this uh, these days. This is the Mamba V3 from Off Grid Knives. So you've got that modified Warncliffe or reverse Tonto, whatever we're going to call it. And you've got a titanium handle. Now, this looks just like, in terms of size and profile, uh, looks very, very, very similar to the um, Enforcer XL. Of course, that has a big, giant pillar here with a topped with a glass-breaking cone, uh, which extends the length of the knife by about a half inch. But overall, it's the same profile. Nice and thin as it goes uh, for titanium here. Uh, you've got that golf ball patterning, deep carry loop over pocket clip that's reversible with a filler tab, which I love. And the star of the show, that gray Cerakoted micro, oh, I'm sorry. I almost, Magna Cut blade, I almost said Microtech. Magna Cut blade. Uh, so I think that's the only Magna Cut on the table right now. I've got a, a good number of knives with Magna Cut, but this one lately, I think it's the combination of, I've always loved the shape of the Mamba or the Enforcer, uh, but it was always waiting for a premium model. I mean, the Enforcer XL is so cool, but it's a, it's a liner lock. It's a little thicker. It's G10. Um, this is just, I would feel comfortable wearing this to a board meeting. I'm not on any boards. I cover a board. I'd, I'd feel fine uh, carrying this in a nice suit. Might be a little heavy. It's pretty light being titanium, but it's quite large. So if it is, it does also ride very nicely, as I have learned in the waistband. Uh, the Mamba V3. Check out the black Mamba V2. It's just like this with titanium and the golf ball texturing. But it's all black, and it's got a 3.25 inch blade. And I gotta say, just that that dip in blade length puts it in a totally different strata. It looks like a much smaller knife. This thing's a beauty. Definitely go check it out. All right, penultimate on the list is this one. It's gotten so much carry. I got pork grease on it uh, on the micarta there. This is the. Uh, Dirk Pinkerton designed artisan cutlery Kami. Uh, Kami is a K A M I. Kami is a maker of kukris in Nepal. And that's an indication as to his um, influence. And if that's not enough, looking at the blade is a good indicator because you've got that downward swept spine. You've got that super recurve with the belly. Uh, it's pretty much a kukri folding kukri a uh, very nice handle brackets the hand with that great uh, thumb placement in reverse grip very thin uh uh full flat ground blade this thing is a, a knife i've been carrying a lot okay but when i go to cut stuff with it i'm always astounded at how freaking sharp it is how easily it uh it goes through any cutting task like tough pork chops, as you can see right here. Now, this one is the titanium and micarta and S35 version. Uh, you can get this in uh, M390 and full titanium as well. But I, oof, excuse me, I speculate or I, I, I not speculate, I hold that uh, this micarta version is better. It's just better. 
I like it better. And you see cool micro milling here on the chamfers too. I thought I should tell you about and on the clip. A great knife. The Kami is available. It went available not that long ago. I believe it was like last week, but I've been talking about it for a long time. I thought it was already out, but we did a story on it here and now it is fully out. All right. The last one in my list. This one actually resuscitated my love of folders. I've been very into fixed blades lately. And this one, when I got it, when I saw it, I was like, okay, I'm willing to spend the money on this folder. This is the Microtech Amphibian. <laughs> what can I say? The Microtech Amphibian. What a great knife. Uh, the blade reminded me a bit of the Commander by Emerson. So immediately endearing. I love a recurve. I love a belly. I love a big swedge. Um, I love everything about this knife. So this one comes in this contoured and milled um, G10, but it also comes in a, an aluminum version. So exact same profile, exact same um, dimensions, uh, but hewn in uh, aluminum. This one, I opted for the G10. I have the all aluminum stitch kind of in the same series. And I wanted to try this with the, with the G10. I got to say, I'm happy I got the G10 on this. I really like the aluminum on my stitch. But, you know, aluminum, like all metals, does take on the, the ambient temperature. So in the winter, it's freaking cold. And um, so... I don't know. Sometimes it's nice to have a warmer um, material like this G10 or micarta. Uh, this one has KM390. I don't know. I'm sorry. M39, M390MK, uh, which is proprietary M390 from Microtech. I'm not sure what they do to make it proprietary. But, I mean, I ask you, just look at that blade. And I opted for the serrations in this case. In the past, serrations have been a necessary evil. If I'm trying to get a model and all I can find is the serrated version, now I seek them out, depending. Uh, but definitely with Microtech, I love their serrations. How they're proud of the original edge is cool because that means they already decide before grinding uh, and cutting out the blanks. They're, they've already decided how many serrated models they're going to make. And they're serrated from before they even have an edge. At least that's what I speculate from how the teeth of the knife, uh, teeth of the blade stand proud of the edge. Unlike your, your bench maids and, and other more pedestrian knives where you can see how there's the edge and, oh, way up there, that's the, uh, that's the run of serrations. So Microtech Amphibian, I got to say, really, really did the job of reawakening uh, my passion for folders. So these are my 10 uh, favorite folders from autumn 2024. What are yours? Let me know. Drop them down below. Now, this doesn't mean that these came out in autumn. These mean during this month, this is what I happen to be grabbing. I could have, well, I do have some pretty old knives in this list, uh, but most of them are new because I get new knives. I want to carry them. Tell me about your uh, uh calculus all right uh drop it in the comment below for jim working his magic behind the switcher i'm bob demarco saying until next time don't take dull for an answer thanks for listening to the knife junkie podcast if you enjoyed the show please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com for show notes for today's episode additional resources and to listen to past episodes visit our website theknifejunkie.com you can also watch our latest videos on youtube at theknifejunkie.com slash youtube check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash instagram and join our facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash facebook and if you have a question or comment email them to bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast